Now, understanding the classification of skin. Skin is classified in two important categories, a proper skin and the derivatives of skin. The derivatives of skin are very simple. So here, a simple derivative, nails, another good example, sweat glands, oil glands, which are also known as sebaceous glands and memory glands are derivatives of skin. So five derivatives of skin that we understand. Now, proper skin is classified into epidermis and dermis. The difference between epidermis and dermis is extremely important. Epidermis is the outermost layer. It is non-vascular in nature. That means it is without a without the blood capillaries. It's just an external protective covering which is responsible for protection of the body from the extreme ultra, ultraviolet rays. It is also the layer which exfoliates, that is, it removes the bacteria. It is the topmost layer that protects the body from any germs, uh, any fungi, any bacteria that could accumulate onto the surface. Also, melanin, which is the pigmentation, is present in this layer. Another important function of the epidermis is to protect the internal organs of the body. Now, this epidermis is further classified into three aspects, cornified layer, glanular layer and malphigian layer that we would understand later. Dermis is another important layer. Now, dermis is the thick layer but it is vascular in nature here is where the blood capillaries run so when we say during the cold uh, cold months uh, the uh, the hair on the skin gets erect then we say there is construction of the blood vessels so these vessels are present where these vessels are present in the dermis layer not the epidermis layer epidermis layer is non-vascular it does not have blood capillary very important to note dermis is the layer which is vascular it has the supply of uh, blood capillaries it is living it is relatively thin thick and has two important fibers that are important. The branched ones are yellow and these are elastin fibers. The white one are the collagen fibers and these white ones are unbranched. So the yellow ones which are the elastin are, uh, are branched. The white ones which are collagen are not branched. So another important thing in derm is that you need to understand is branched and unbranched. The next important thing is, as we understood, dermis is the layer where blood capillaries are found. Again, this is the layer which has the blood capillaries and the sensory corpses. That means it is sensitive to touch, sensitive to heat, sensitive to pain. So this is the layer through which the sensations go to the brain or the signals go to the brain. 80% of it occurs in the portion of uh, the thickness that is maintained for the dermis and it helps to attach the underlying organs which are present. So attachment of the organs to the dermis layer becomes important. Now if there is a burn, if it is a superficial burn, it would only affect the epidermis. But it, if it is a deep burn, it would affect the dermis. And if it is very severe, it could affect the internal organs through the dermis as well. Because dermis is the layer which is connected to the internal organ. And this dermis is has the thickness. That means it has adipose cells and that maintains that uh, or we can say that regulates the body temperature. So regulation of the body temperature again occurs through this layer. In the animals what we see is hides. The hides of the animal is obtained from which layer? The hide of the animal is obtained from the dermis layer not the epidermis layer. So again an important thing. Now there is another important term which is known as dermal papillae. Dermal papillae are what? These are nerve endings and these nerve endings are found on the fingertips. Now blind people have a very good sensation of these dermal papillae and because of the dermal papillae they can sense the objects very nicely. So dermal papillae are the nerve endings on the end of the fingers, the tip of the fingers and the, this helps blind people to have an extremely sensitive 
touch sensation through which they can understand also on our hand we do have furrows and ridges these furrows and ridges as we understood are important for the function of grasping if there is no furrows and ridges on the skin what would happen the grasp won't be that uh, strong it would be uh, it would be very silk, uh, silky touch and as a result the grasp for it would be poor so what happens for the animals monkeys or any arboreal animal which climb on trees have this good grasp because of the furrows and the ridges which are present here so dermis as i said is vascular it is the layer which attaches to the internal organs and is very very important it does have uh, the uh, the skin proper does have the dermal papillae which are the nerve endings and those are responsible for the sensation coming on to the layer of dermis layer of dermis has three important layers cornified layer which is known as the stratum corneum the next is the uh, granular layer which is known as stratum granular and the last one is the stratum germinativum which is the malphigian layer so cornified layer granular layer and malphigian layers three layers within the topmost epidermis now epidermis as i said is without the blood capillaries that's one very important thing the outermost layer is the cornified layer which is known as stratum corneus corneum and this is the layer which usually have the thin scale like dead cells the outermost structure if you uh, visualize your skin during winter months you would see cracks or layers or formations and that is an example of the cornified layer now in the case of animals horns are produced because of this cornified layer they are rich in keratin keratin also has this sulfur containing horny substance and they are called as keratinized or cornified layers the thickness and the number of layers the numbers actually vary the thickest or the hardest part of the cornified layer is present where the thickest or the hardest part of the cornified layer is present in the heels in the legs uh, the thick layer is also present on the palm on the sole and the thin layers are present on the eye layer cornea cornea again the cornified layer is transparent so there are various ways through which we understand the layer of the skin which in some cases transparent in some cases thick as in the heels soles palms uh, and also the next is this layer is constantly replaced this layer exfoliates and the new layer is replaced by it this new layer is brought through the malphagian tubes and malphagian tube produces constantly by the process of cell division so the dividing layer we could say in the epidermis is the malphagian layer uh, then exfoliation is the process through which the removal of the cornified layer takes place the second layer is the granular layer which is known as stratum granulum and this stratum granulum is the layer which is a transition layer between the cornified layer and the malphigian layer the malphigian layer is the actively dividing layer and this layer has around a uh, few oval cells two to three oval cells or rounded cells that are present the granular layer <coughs> is the living layer and uh, this is by the deposition of keratin uh, onto the cytoplasm the last layer is the malphigian layer within the epidermis this is the actively dividing layer it is known as stratum germinativum or it is also known as malphigi layer this is a single layer as you can see in the diagram it is a constantly dividing layer and has a pigment which is known as melanin this melanin pigment is responsible for the color of the skin now melanin is synthesized by what melanin is synthesized by phenyl aniline so phenyl aniline synthesizes it that is the phenyl aniline is what phenyl aniline is the amino acid and its synthesis depends on what its synthesis depends on the enzyme which is known as triosinase now 
the pigmentation varies people who are living in cold climate have less melanin that means they have less melanophores less melanocytes and the skin color would be relatively light so that is again an important aspect of the malphigian layer of the epidermis so as i mentioned epidermis has three important layers to repeat again those are cornified layers granular layer and malphigian layer malphigian layer or known as the stratum germinativum is the layer as the name suggests germinativum that is it is germinating it is actively dividing and since it is the dividing layer the cornified layer on the top exfoliates and the new cells are being replaced from the malphigian layer the granular layer lies in between it is made up of two to three oval to round cells and is living in nature and and this is the basic structure of the epidermis the dermis structure we have already understood which is important and as you can see in this diagram we have also understood the role of erector uh, erector pili muscle which actually binds to the hair roots and creates a air insulation when required during the winter months and this air insulation actually uh, protects the outer layers or our skin or provides insulation during the winter months by the process of vasoconstriction and pillow erection this is made possible so this is a basic understanding of the epidermis and the dermis layer of the skin